I've gone on outdoor runs ever since I can remember. It was around 6 p.m. one night in the summer. I just finished eating a light dinner and, as usual, decided to go on a run. I always run the same path, neighborhood sidewalks for about a half mile, then pass a gate into the forest where I run another two miles. Now, the forest I ran in has two separate paths, one paved and one not. The unpaved one is more scenic, so I'll usually take it on the way in. I'll then take the paved path when I turn around and start heading back. The paths into the forest are a bit hidden. I don't think many people know about them, so they're usually not that busy. It's actually kind of rare for me to see another person on my run. But, of course, every once in a while, I'll meet some people walking their dog or something. But other than that, I'm pretty much alone. Well, at least I thought I was. i have been running in the forest for a while now, when I heard a notification coming from my phone. It wasn't a text message, rather an airdrop notification. I could tell from the sound. I panicked. Clearly someone had to have been close to me to send this. I tried to play it off like I didn't hear it and kept running for a few seconds. I then stopped to change the music. In reality, I was pulling out my phone to look at the notification. I clicked on it, and my heart sank. It was a Snapchat picture of me mid-run with the caption, Come Back. Clearly, it was taken just seconds ago. I was wearing the same clothes in the picture and everything. From where the picture was taken, it looked like the person was hiding in the bushes. I put my phone back and started running as fast as I could. I was forced to take the long way out of the forest back to my neighborhood. As I was running, I started hearing rustling and footsteps behind me, but I didn't turn back knowing it would slow me down. When I finally reached the edge of the forest, I began running through backyards to lose whoever was chasing me. It worked, with the last thing I could hear being metal hitting metal, suggesting he or she had some sort of weapon. I still don't know who it was, as like I said, I never looked behind me. I don't even have the slightest clue what they looked like. I don't know what they wanted from me. I never ran in that forest again, and have since turned off my phone's airdrop completely. My brother-in-law and I were on a road trip across the country. We were driving on a remote highway in New Mexico. I'm talking one rest stop or gas station about every 100 miles, every one of them being solitary with no other buildings in sight. By this point, it was already dark. We would take turns driving four hour shifts until about 1 or 2 a.m. Then we would stop at a rest stop to sleep. It was a bit past midnight, and with rest stops being as rare as they were, we both agreed to stop for the night at the next one we saw. Another hour passed, when we finally saw one. We took the exit, and sure enough, there was your typical middle of nowhere rest stop. There was one other car parked in front of the doors off to the side. We got out to go to the bathroom and walked up to the double doors, each of us grabbing a door handle. The doors were locked. I turned and looked around to see if there was a sign explaining why. I mean, the lights were on inside, it didn't look closed. I cupped my hands to the door and further surveyed the inside. That's when I saw it. There was a splash of bright red on what I assume was a closet door near the back. I suddenly realized that I was looking at a huge streak of blood. From the color alone, I could tell it wasn't dry. I froze up. My brother-in-law began banging on the door trying to get someone's attention. I stopped him and pointed out the blood on the wall. I could see the color disappear from his face as he noticed it. We both turned to leave. As we were getting back inside our car, I took a better look at the other car in the parking lot. It had no plates, it had multiple dents, and there was an empty gun rack in the back window of it. We pulled out, and as we were driving off, I saw the door to the rest stop start opening. I didn't really see anyone though. We pulled away before anyone actually came out. We weren't able to call the police for at least a couple hours. We had no service. When we finally did, they assured us they'd inspect the place. Days later, I called the sheriff's department in the county where we stopped that night, asking about what happened or what they found. They told me they'd search their records and call me back with what came up. As far as I know, I never received a call back. I was home alone with my dog. It was around midnight and I decided to let him outside one last time before going to bed. I opened the front door and he went off running out into the night. I then closed and locked it while I went to go get ready for bed. This was pretty routine. After using the bathroom, he usually liked to walk around for a few minutes before coming back inside. 
As I was walking back downstairs, I could hear scratching on the door. This was how my dog would let me know he was ready to be let back inside, so I headed over to open the door. I don't know why, but ever since I was young, I've always had the habit of looking through the door's peephole before opening it. Like, it doesn't matter the situation, I can't open the door without knowing 100% who it is. I do this, and instead of seeing my dog, I see a man with his head down staring very intently at the door handle. I froze with my eyes still glued to the peephole. I then heard the scratching again, louder this time. It was the man. I could see his hands moving up and down against the door. He was pretending to be my dog to get me to open the door. I was worried for my dog's safety. I wanted to call the police, but I didn't think they would take me seriously. I tried taking a picture of the man with my phone, knowing I could at least make a report. But my camera couldn't take pictures through the peephole. It was too small. You couldn't make out anything behind the glass. All of a sudden, the man lifts up his shirt and pulls out a knife. He begins trying to pick the door's lock. This went on for maybe a minute, when my dog finally noticed him and started barking. Now, my dog isn't that big. He's actually pretty small, but he has a deep-sounding bark. That, mixed with the fact that it was dark, and the man likely couldn't see my dog, was enough to startle him into running off. My dog retook his place at the front door, to which I quickly opened it and let him back in. It's been a while since this happened, and I've since moved to a new house. I did end up filing a police report, but they weren't able to come up with any suspects. I'm currently living in my car after being put in a poor financial situation because of some circumstances that I won't mention. I'd just gotten off of a long shift at work and was extremely exhausted. I parked in some random Walmart parking lot and got into the back of my car. I reached over and put the keys in the ignition so that I could keep the heat on. I laid down and fell asleep right away, unfortunately forgetting to lock my doors. Now, I've always been a heavy sleeper. It takes a lot to get me up. I remember opening my eyes, my other senses slowly coming to me. It was still dark outside, and there was this slight humming sound. I instinctively looked out one of the windows. I could see trees quickly passing by. Someone was in the driver's seat, and the car was moving. They were wearing a hood, so I couldn't see their face. I slowly reached over to the passenger side back door compartment where I kept a knife. I grabbed it and abruptly pointed it at the guy as I screamed at him. He must have seen the knife through the rearview mirror, as he didn't even look back at me before slamming on the brakes, opening the door and getting out. He ran in a straight line directly into the forest that was covering the road on both sides. I sat there trying to catch my breath. I had no idea where I was. The best description I can give is some sketchy road in a tightly compacted forest. I locked all the doors. I checked my phone. It was 3 a.m. I had no phone service, so I turned around and started driving back until I got some. I was two hours away from the parking lot I had fallen asleep in. I don't know who that guy was. I never saw his face. A part of me thinks he was simply trying to steal the car, not realizing I was sleeping in the back. But how could he not have seen me? I worry it was an attempted abduction. In my early 20s, I was using Tinder a lot. Sometimes I would go out with a girl and we wouldn't connect, or I'd just get stood up. I eventually matched with this one girl who was really close to me. It was like a couple miles or something. I knew this mentor profile must have been new, because I'd already been on the app for a while now, and it was getting to the point where it was starting to suggest people that were really far away. We talked for about a day, and decided to go out for dinner that evening. The plan was I would pick her up and we would go from there. I got in my car and sent my GPS to the address she gave me. It was an apartment complex. When I got there, I texted her asking which apartment door was hers. I drove around the open complex searching for the right numbers until I finally got to her building. I texted her that I was parked right outside. Immediately, I got a text back insisting I come meet her at the door. I found this kind of annoying because there was nowhere close to park. I had to go a bit further away to find a spot. As I was walking towards her building, I pulled up her profile one last time to remind myself again exactly what she looked like. I scrolled through her pictures and noticed they were inconsistent. Like each picture was a similar looking but still different girl. I had no idea how I didn't notice this before. 
I gave her the benefit of the doubt and just assumed it was some of her friends or something. I walked to the door and was surprised to find it was unlocked and even slightly cracked open. I reached out my hand to knock, but before I did, I heard a voice from behind the door whisper, Be quiet, he's coming up to the door. It was a male voice. I got a gut reaction to leave or something was going to happen to me. I turned around and ran out of the complex back to my car. When I got home, I checked my phone and saw that I had two new notifications, both from the Tinder account. One said something like, I saw you, where'd you go? And the other said, come back. I ignored these messages, but before I went to bed, I got another text from the account. This one simply said, we got your license plate number. I deleted the app right then and there. I work a night security job. It was 4 a.m. I'd just gotten off of a 10 hour shift and was exhausted. I was also pretty hungry, so I decided to order some food on my phone. I placed my order and put on a movie as I waited. Eventually, I hear the doorbell ring. I'd set the option to contactless delivery, so I waited to get the photo sent to the delivery app before I got up. A couple more minutes pass, and I see the photo of my food on the doorstep. I was about to get up and go get it, when I heard aggressive banging on the door, followed by a man's voice yelling out that my food was here. I was a bit annoyed that the driver was still here, because again, I had the option set to contactless delivery. I pulled up the app and texted in this, saying it's okay for him to leave. The banging continued. I was waiting for him to finally see the text and leave, but that never happened. I finally decided to just open my door and tell him in person. I walked up to the door and opened it. Immediately, a grimy looking man lunged at me, but what he didn't realize is that I had yet to unlock the screen door as well. Seeing all this, I slammed the main door and relocked it. I called the police and reported the man. When they arrived, he was gone. We opened the delivery app to try and find out who he was. When we did, I noticed I had a text back from the driver. It was a confused message explaining how he had left the moment he took the picture of the food and how he was never banging on my door. He had no idea what I was talking about. I ended up filing a report with the police, and that was it. I don't know who that guy was then. I don't know what he was planning that would make him go so far as to fake being my delivery driver just to get me to unlock the door. I still think about how he lunged at me, and how if I had left the screen door unlocked, he easily could have gone inside.